In this discussion, I'm going to talk about fallacies of weak induction and go over the uh, practice exercises that are in the module. This category of fallacies differs from the fallacies of relevance in that fallacies of weak induction do offer evidence that is claimed to support the conclusion of the argument. The problem is the evidence is insufficient. And so there is a connection. It's just not enough to make the conclusion probable. So these are weak arguments and they are weak argument patterns because these are patterns that occur over and over and over. Let's take a look at some of these patterns very quickly. So in this category, we have fallacies such as hasty generalization, false cause, slippery slope, suppressed evidence, unqualified authority, appeal to ignorance, weak analogy, and guilt by association. Some of these have a few subcategories. For example, the gambler's fallacy is a subcategory of a false cause fallacy because it's a mistake to think that your past losing will in some ways cause your future winning. Most of these fallacies are pretty straightforward, although there are some sticking points. There are some common errors that occur almost every semester, and I'm going to address these as I go through the exercises, especially um, hasty generalization, which is a fairly simple fallacy, uh, appears to be one that causes some problems. So when they occur, I will talk about them as I go through the exercises. Okay, so let's begin. Number one, you shouldn't take vitamin supplements. Once you start taking vitamins, then you'll start drinking protein shakes and other supplements. Before long, you'll be doing steroids and you'll turn into a raging monster. You don't want to be a raging monster, so don't take vitamins. So this is a typical slippery slope pattern. In a slippery slope, we are trying to avoid making that first step, which sends us down the road to disaster. So we shouldn't take vitamins because if we take vitamins, that's the first step that will lead us into a disastrous situation. Okay, the same pattern you see in number four. So while we're talking about slippery slope, let's talk about number four, which says, uh, if today you could make teaching evolution in public schools a crime, then tomorrow you can make it a crime to teach it in private schools. And then you can ban books and other educational materials that mention evolution. And then when you do that, then you can ban all science altogether. So it's exactly the same pattern. Slippery slope always has the same pattern. Don't take the first step because that is linked by a causal chain to a disastrous outcome. And the fallacy here is that that causal chain is typically fictitious and will never occur in that particular pattern. Okay, so one and four are both slippery slope arguments. Number two, Emily has bought over 100 tickets for the weekly state lottery and she has never won anything. Therefore, the likelihood increases every week that she will win something if she continues to buy tickets. This is the gambler's fallacy. The fallacy is a, is a causal fallacy because it is the mistaken belief that past losing will cause future winning. That's not the case. There's no causal connection whatsoever between your past losing and your future winning. So that's a false cause. There's no causal link. Number three. When water is poured on the top of a pile of rocks, it always trickles down to the rocks at the bottom. Similarly, when rich people make lots of money, we can expect this money to trickle down to the poor. This is an example of a weak analogy. There is very little similarity between water flowing through rocks and money flowing through an economy. Metaphorically, they may be similar, but in actuality, they're not really very similar at all. And that's what makes this analogy a weak analogy. Number five, I used to work with this engineering major and man, they are really socially inept. I wanna talk about this one in particular a little bit. This is an example of a hasty generalization. Why? Well, because we go from one experience with one engineering major and from that one experience, we conclude that all engineering majors are socially inept. This is the, the characteristic pattern of a hasty generalization. And the very important point I wanna make is, if you're not sure whether or not a fallacy is a hasty generalization, you, you should ask yourself, is the conclusion a general statement? 
In this case, it is. It's a general statement about all engineering majors. So we go from one major to all majors. In a generalization, there must be generalizing going on. And if the conclusion of an argument is about a, an individual entity or a single person or in some ways not a generalization, then you have a different fallacy than the fallacy of hasty generalization. We'll see a few more of these as we go through. So number six says, on Monday I drank 10 rum and cokes and the next morning I woke up with a headache. On Wednesday, I drank eight gin and Cokes, and the next morning, I woke up with a headache. And on Friday, I drank nine bourbon and Cokes, and the next morning, I woke up with a headache. Obviously, to prevent further headaches, I need to stop drinking Coke. Well, it's not the Coke that's causing the headaches. It's all the alcohol that you're adding to the Coca-Cola. So this is an example of a false cause fallacy. You have an effect, the headaches, but you've attached it to the wrong causal mechanism in this case. Number seven. Radio entertainer Dash Basbo claims there's not a shred of evidence to prove that nicotine is addictive. Given his expertise as a talk show host, I guess he must know what he's talking about. Well, as a talk show host, he probably knows a lot about entertainment, but that doesn't make him an expert on nicotine. So this is a fallacy of unqualified authority. Number eight follows our typical pattern of slippery slope. Some parents in the school district have asked that we provide bilingual education in Spanish. This request will have to be denied. If we provide this service, then someone will ask for bilingual education in Greek, and then it will be German, Japanese, Farsi, Hungarian, and Tagalog. We certainly cannot accommodate all of these requests, so the initial request will have to be denied. So here again, if we take that first step, then that opens the door to a disastrous outcome that no one can deal with, so we should not take the first step. Now, the reason why this is a fallacy is that if we provide bilingual Spanish education, it is unlikely that that will cause a, a causal chain to open up in this respect. Number nine, certainly Miss Malone will be a capable and efficient manager of our company. She's got great taste in shoes. Well, maybe she does have great taste in shoes, but that misses the point because that's not really related to whether or not she's going to be a capable or efficient manager of the company. Number 10, the, fen the, the French are snobby and rude. Remember those two high and mighty Parisians with really bad manners? I rest my case. Here again, we have a classic hasty generalization. We generalize from our experience of two Parisians who had bad manners to all French people. The conclusion is that the French, all French people are snobby and rude. This is an example of a typical kind of hasty generalization. And just like in the previous example I talked about, the conclusion is a general statement about all French people derived from a sample of only two people. The sample size is too small. Number 11 is an appeal to ignorance. Nobody has ever proved that immoral behavior by elected officials erodes public morality. Therefore, we must conclude that such behavior does not erode public morality. Here the idea is because you haven't proved something, I'm, I'm allowed to believe the opposite if I want to because there's no evidence one way or the other. Whereas merely because I can't prove that nobody lives on the moon, that isn't evidence that someone does live on the moon. You're simply appealing to a lack of knowledge, which is ignorance. So this is why we call it an appeal to ignorance. Number 12. My father smoked four packs of cigarettes a day since the age of 14 and lived until the age of 69. Therefore, smoking really can't be that bad for you. Okay, so here we have an example of a hasty generalization. Merely because your father lived to be 69, that's an extraordinary um, outlier. That's an unusual case. You cannot generalize from the unusual case of a four pack a day smoker to, to, to all people who smoke four packs a day. So that's a hasty generalization. Today on our show, we're gonna interview three people who live to be 100 years old and get their advice on longevity. You see this stuff on TV all the time, right? And this is a fallacy of unqualified authority. Merely because you live a long time does not make you an expert on longevity. Um, it just makes you lucky, I suppose. So uh, 
That doesn't mean you're an expert in aging and health and those kinds of things. 14 is a very famous weak analogy in the history of philosophy. No one on encountering a watch lying on a forest trail would expect that it had simply appeared there without having been made by someone. For the same reason, no one should expect the universe simply appeared without having been made by some being. This is the classic watch analogy, and it tries to draw an analogy between the complexity of a watch and the complexity of the universe. However, the watch is a mechanical artifact. The universe is a natural entity. They're really not that similar at all. Number 15. I met these two guys on a plane, and they said they were from Albuquerque. They were total druggies. Almost everyone in that city must be on drugs. So what we have here is another example of a hasty generalization, where you generalize from two people to draw a general conclusion about the habits of the entire populace of a city. Again, this is a sample that's too small to justify the conclusion, making this a very weak argument. Number 16 says more and more young people are attending high schools and colleges than ever before, yet there is more juvenile delinquency and more alienation among the young. This makes it clear that these young people are being corrupted by their education. This would be an example of uh, a false cause fallacy because it doesn't seem that there's any reasonable causal connection between a college education and juvenile delinquency and alienation. It's not it's not the increasing education that is causing those phenomena. It could be economics, it could be political, but clearly the causal mechanism is not increasing education. 17. Why should we be sentimental over a few hundred thousand Native Americans who were killed when our great civilization was being built? It may be that they suffered injustices, but after all, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. So this is uh, a weak analogy, and it's a pretty pathetic analogy if you think about it. Who, who, would, who would in their right mind compare killing hundreds of thousands of people with making an omelet, right? This is, this is just a horrible, horrible argument. So that's a weak analogy. This ruling, or the ruling, sounds like the beginning of a totalitarian state. Judge Owens is violating the concept of secret ballots by demanding that faculty members reveal how they voted. Next, the government will want to prohibit secret voting in unions, professional organizations, civic organizations, corporations, and finally in the general election. Do you recognize the pattern? It's always the same. This is a slippery slope. If we take that first step, the result will be a disaster. Number 19, there is intelligent life in outer space because no one has been able to prove that there isn't. Well, that's true. No one's been able to prove that there isn't intelligent life in outer space, but that doesn't count as evidence that there is. What would count as evidence that there is? Oh, I don't know, maybe finding some uh, or some kind of contact uh, that indicates intelligence, but the fact that no one can prove that there isn't doesn't count. So this is an appeal to ignorance. 20. The people who fulfill orders at Amazon are incompetent. Last year, they got two of my orders mixed up. Again, this is a hasty generalization where we go from two orders being mixed up from Amazon to conclude that the people who fulfill the orders are incompetent. That is going from two cases to every case, but the two cases are not sufficient because it's just too small of a sample. So this is a classic example of a hasty generalization. I hope that with a bit of practice, these are becoming easier to identify. It takes a little bit of time, and I know there are lots of names, but the patterns are pretty distinct. And it's very valuable to learn these because you'd be amazed at how often they occur in argumentation in daily life. Let's take a look at number 21. No sooner did, no sooner did they start putting fluoride in the water, but my friends began dying of heart disease. It doesn't pay to tamper with nature. This is a, an example of a false cause fallacy. Um, oftentimes when one thing happens after another, when someone gets heart disease after fluoride gets put in the water, we think that since one thing happens after another, the first is causing the second. That is, we think in or we imagine a causal link where there may not be one. This is uh, often described by the phrase, correlation does not necessarily imply causation. 
Just because one thing is correlated with something else doesn't mean the first is causing the second. It might be, but there needs to be independent evidence for that. So this is a false cause fallacy. People have freedom of choice because no one has been able to prove that they don't. Again, this is just like our intelligent life in outer space example. Just because I can't prove that they don't have freedom of choice isn't evidence that they do. People may have freedom of choice, but that would have to be supported with independent evidence. Sean Hannity, a political commentator for Fox News, says that waterboarding is an effective interrogation technique that does not constitute torture. Therefore, we must conclude that it is morally acceptable to waterboard suspected terrorists. So here we have a political commentator on television who's basically an entertainer talking about effective interrogation techniques. This is an unqualified authority. This person does not have the relevant expertise. So this is the fallacy of unqualified authority. 24. When a car breaks down so often that repairs become pointless, the car is thrown on the junk heap. Similarly, when a person becomes old and diseased, he or she should be mercifully put to death. Here again, uh, we have a very weak analogy. There's no similarity really between a car becoming old and a person becoming old. The very fact that one is a person makes them very, very different categories. So this is an example of a weak analogy. 25. Childhood obesity is a major health problem these days. Obviously, our city's health officials aren't doing their jobs. This is a subcategory of the fallacies of false cause. This is an example of an oversimplified cause where you have a complex phenomenon, in this case, childhood obesity. Now, one of the factors causing it may be that the public health officials aren't doing their jobs, but that's just one causal factor. There are probably dozens of others, and they're probably all very complex. So when we try to find a simple cause for a complex effect, we generally are committing the fallacy of oversimplified cause. Politicians love to do this. They take really complex situations in the world and they say, well, you know, if we just made the lottery illegal or something like that, all of our problems would go away. And uh, sadly, because the public is not really well trained in critical thinking, uh, they believe these kinds of stories, right? But the problem is that complex social problems have complex causes. And so when we reduce the cause to a very simple situation like this, we are committing the false cause fallacy. 26. Raising a child is like growing a tree. Uh-oh. I don't know. I don't like where this one's going. Raising a child is like growing a tree. Sometimes violent things such as cutting off branches have to be done to force the tree to grow straight. Similarly, corporal punishment must sometimes be inflicted on children to, enforce, to force them to develop properly. So whenever I hear something is like something else, I immediately start thinking, okay, here's an analogy. Where is this analogy going? And here we have a, a clear case of a very weak analogy. There's no real comparison between pruning a tree and spanking your children. 27, the vast majority of car accidents occur within 20 miles of one's home. Apparently it is much more dangerous to drive close to home than far away from home. This is an example of a false cause fallacy. Driving near your home is not what causes accidents, but rather the fact that you drive most of your miles in proximity to your home. So that's what's causing the accidents. So that's a false cause. 28, nobody has ever proved that using cell phones causes brain tumors. Therefore, using cell phones does not cause brain tumors. This is an example of an appeal to ignorance. Merely because somebody has not proven something isn't the case doesn't mean that it is or vice versa. Cell phones may cause brain cancer, or maybe they don't cause brain cancer, but whatever turns out to be the case will be supported by evidence, not merely because you can't prove that they don't or they can't prove that they do. 29. Dozens of species of plants and animals are being wiped out every year, even though we have laws to prevent it. Clearly, we should repeal the Endangered Species Act. This would be an example of a false cause fallacy. It's not that the Endangered Species Act is causing species to be wiped out, but rather it's trying to prevent species from being wiped out. 30. 
people are driving their cars like maniacs tonight. There must be a full moon. This is a really common false cause fallacy. The moon does not cause people to go crazy. The moon does not cause weird behavior. In fact, when the moon is full, things are more calm because there's more light. And when there's more light, there's less crime and it's safer to drive. So uh, here we have another example of a, of a false cause fallacy. Number 31. The food at Pappy's restaurant is awful. I had a sandwich there once and the bread was stale. This is a pattern we've seen many times before because uh, it's a hasty generalization. You go from one experience of one sandwich with stale bread to draw the conclusion that all the food at Pappy's restaurant is awful. Well, that is insufficient evidence. That's only one experience of one order. That's not enough evidence to conclude that the food at Pappy's is awful. That's what makes this a weak argument. Now, keep in mind, the food at Pappy's may indeed be awful, but we need more evidence than simply one sandwich to make that claim justified. So as it stands, this is a hasty generalization. 32. Of course the Lakers are going to make the playoffs next year since they missed them for the last six years. Okay, so this is an example of the gambler's fallacy, the idea that previous losing is going to cause future winning, okay? 33, the farmers in our state have asked that we introduce legislation to provide subsidies for soybeans. Unfortunately, we will have to turn down their request. If we give subsidies, subsidies to the soybean farmers, then the corn and the wheat growers will ask for the same thing. Then it will be cotton and citrus and cattle, and in the end, the costs will be astronomical. Let's not set foot on this slippery slope. Hopefully now, slippery slope should be the most obvious fallacy because the pattern is very typically the same. This snake in my garden is harmless, so I guess all snakes are harmless. Now this is where committing the fallacy of hasty generalization can get you in really big trouble, right? Because just because that snake in your garden is harmless, you cannot conclude that all snakes are harmless. People do this with mushrooms all the time, right? The mushrooms in the store are safe, therefore I guess all mushrooms are safe. Well, if you commit that fallacy, it's likely to end you in the hospital, if not worse, right? So beware of generalizing from an insufficient or an unusual sample. This is a hasty generalization. Learning fallacies is like eating chocolate chip cookies. Once you start, you can't stop. Well, I'm not so sure that learning fallacies is really very similar to eating chocolate chip cookies. This sounds like a weak analogy to me, but hopefully in your case, you are uh, in, at least enjoying learning some of these fallacies. So this is the end of the exercises that were in the module. Generally speaking, I think learning fallacies is important as a tool in your intellectual toolbox for intellectual self-defense. The more fallacies you learn, the easier it becomes to recognize them when people try to commit them. Uh, and of course, it helps you to avoid committing fallacies as well. And that's really our goal. Our goal is to be rational people and to make strong arguments. Um, so learning fallacies can empower you in the sense that it, it can give you protection against these fallacies and you start to see them everywhere and that's kind of the fun of learning fallacies. So hopefully you've worked through these exercises and understand why they're classified the way they are. The next group of fallacies will be fallacies of presumption and fallacies of language and that'll be in the next module. So this concludes our conversation about fallacies of weak induction and the only thing left to do after this is to take the quiz. Good luck on the quiz.